Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. I thought I would just do a quick review of the Big Agnes 10 Sleep 6. This is my first setup. Just picked it up yesterday. Nice sunny day in Utah for February, mid 50s. and I thought, man, it's just perfect, huh? Good timing, just got the tent. So I came out to this park and I'm giving it a whirl. I gotta say, I really like those colors. The pictures I was seeing uh, on the net didn't do it justice. Uh, but yeah, let's get on with it. The uh, first thing I noticed that, that really struck out was actually the, the the bag that it came with. It's a duffel style bag and it, you open it up, it opens up with, uh, it's held together at the top by buckles. And they have, you know, just your standard feel to them. They don't feel cheap at all. Um, so you got sim same size pockets on either side for one side. You know, you put your fly in there. The other, of course, for your tent body. And then down the middle is for your poles. And then there's a little po zippered pocket here on the side, you know, on the inside of it here that uh, can hold just about anything you want, but it came with the stakes. Um, then you got your emergency pole repair splint, and that actually was on the awning pole, which is gonna be interesting. But uh, it's nice to have that. I've never had to use one of those, but I, I probably will at some point. It's nice to have. The uh, This is my first time with a tent this large. I have an older Quest Viper tent. Two-man, if you're friendly. <laughs> and a, uh, a solo Oslo Ptarmigan, which is based on an MS, MSR design, which I actually have an MSR footprint for. Uh, though it doesn't quite match up on size. But uh, it just... You know, this big Agnes tent's very high quality. First thing I noticed was the quality of the poles. Very, very nice, smooth finish, well built. And they did come with a slight bend to them. Which I think was smart. You know, uh, when you read reviews about tents, some people complain about poles bending right out of the bag, so that'll help the, uh, the less tent savvy keep from hurting their poles I'd say let's hop inside here the inside height is six foot three here let me hop down here and aim up for you but it's all sorts of room it's less of a sectagon shape uh, than I thought it was going to be which is great because I'm gonna have a couple cots in here so it's more or less rectangular over eight feet at the ends. I think it's actually eight, eight foot four at the ends. Maybe another eight inches wider in the middle. Real world. I think it was rated a little bit higher than that in the center, but that's fine. As you can see, it's quite roomy. And I'm six foot two and I have my big boots on and I can just stand up in the center. So that is fantastic. Lots of good mesh in several spots, as you can see. There's a little a little basically just metal rod surrounded by Velcro that you can put into place so that it uh, can breathe a little bit better there. I know there's a name for that, but I'm not up on all the terminology and everything. You've got a pocket on each of the front corners towards the top, and then along the sides there you can see there are actually three on each side. So really there's all sorts of room to put your gear, your little extras and stuff. You could easily put a light up here. Um, there are attachment points for the loft several spots which I probably won't purchase because then that kind of does away with the point of getting a tall tent doesn't it and then the uh, the poles go through sleeves at the top of the tent I don't know if you can maybe see that there and then there's the one for the vestibule and it actually works really well to go through the sleeve uh, the sleeves are mesh but I found that the poles didn't catch even in the slightest which very much impressed me my uh, Oslo Ptarmigan has the opposite problem. In fact, I stabbed a hole through one of the mesh sleeves a few years ago. But it does go together fairly tight. You know, the tent itself stakes down great and is very tight. The fly could use, in my opinion, the fly could use a few more attachment points um, to guy out the sides. You can see here, in between where the fly attaches to the tent, it's pretty loose. I think with, with some more practice, getting the tent together a few times and getting a feel for it and you know the, t the fabric stretching a little bit being that it's new 
I could probably get it a little bit tighter. We'll see what happens with that. I could always add some guy out points myself. And it does have guy out points higher up for those windy days. Um, like everything else on the tent, I'm very impressed with the quality. It seems to have plenty of reinforcing in there. The guy lines, uh, it looks like, have some reflective fabric sewn into it. And I did take one out just so you could see how, unroll one rather, just so you can see how long it is. So you do have plenty there. If you're on hilly country or you got rocks around you, it's plenty long. All right, then going to the attachment points, points for the fly, they are buckles like you would expect with a tent of this caliber. In fact, from what I've seen, most tents at any price point, not any, but a lot of price points do come with this that have the full fly, which is fantastic. And they give you that, that normal few inches of, of loop for staking it down, it gives a little more flexibility. And then I did get the footprint, which you might be able to see there under my hand, there it is. And that attaches just, I won't pull it apart, because oh, I'm doing this with one hand here, but it attaches with a grommet on the bottom of the pole where it's skinnier and then the bottom uh, the very end of the pole itself does have a, a and a ridge that's a little bit wider so that once you get that through uh, the fly is not going to come off it's not going to go anywhere and then it does have this loop here that allows you to pull it out to get it lined up just right and actually I was surprised but by the time I was done that uh, that footprint I don't know if you can see is on there quite quite snug so that's very impressive. It's built perfectly, at least in my case, there were no mistakes. And I couldn't find any mistakes on this tent anywhere. Uh, nothing was sewn wrong, uh, nothing missing. None of the mesh had any problems. It was really, uh, I'm just thoroughly impressed. When I bought my Quest tent, it, uh, it had some sewing issues on it, though everything else was fine. My ptarmigan was okay. But again, the ptarmigan sleeves were a, a big issue for me. It still is every time I put it up. I may actually go away from that tent, get something else smaller for my next backpacking tent. Maybe a nice big Agnes. Small big Agnes, that is. Of course, the back has a vestibule as well. It, it looks big, but by the time you open it up and you take into account the slope of the back of the tent, it's really not that, that big. But it is big enough to store some gear, as you can see. You know, it's maybe two and a half feet of usable space depth wise there right at the center. Of course you got a back door. Now the thing that really sold me on this tent more than anything else was uh, the fly. It's very versatile. Um, you can see here just below the guy out point that there are these little loops and what you can actually do is Starting from the bottom, of course, unattach, distach, unattach the uh, the fly, roll it up, and so you can actually bring it all the way up from all the way up to this height, which is about three and a half, close to four feet, I would say. So you can do that all the way from the front, all the way to the back, and of course, to do it, you're going to have to have the doors open, which is fine. Come up here, you can see come over here where it's already open. So you could just leave the front attached like this. And just open up the sides, like I have here. It's got the same kind of hook and loop style, not hook and loop, but uh, what'd you call that? Pagan loop? There's probably an official name for it. I don't know it. And then that would allow you to roll it up over here. However, now that I look at it closer, you would have to undo that clip on the fly. Which I suppose would be a big deal. Let's see here. Let's try it. Yeah. All right. I like that. I can see it wouldn't take very long. With a little bit of practice to quickly take care of that. All right. Well, I'm probably missing something. But uh, oh yeah, there were, there was one more thing. Uh, all the ta all the seams on the floor and the fly, as you might expect, are uh, sealed. Um, Big Agnes uses 
um, the safe, environmentally wise, the safest uh, tape that you can use, or so they say. Um, it doesn't have certain chemicals in it that can be real dangerous. And the aluminum, the way that they get that looking so fine, is also chemical free. Uh, so that was good to hear. And one of the things that kind of added into my desire for this, for a big Agnes tent. Um, not the major thing, but just a nice to know that they're trying. And it is a U.S. company. They're based out of Colorado. So there's another good reason any day of the week. Let me pan back here so you can get a good look from all angles. I can see this fly, the colors of this fly being hit and miss for you, a lot of you guys. Um, I wasn't sure when I first saw it because I wanted a tame tent that had more earthy tones in it. So I blended in more, but now that I have it up and have been on the inside to see how that orange and green light up the inside, uh, it's really quite nice. I have no problem with it. I think I will be the envy of the campsite with this bad boy. If any of you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below. And again, this is the Big Agnes 10 Sleep 6. And this is Joe's first tent review.